Welcome to another edition of Vigorously with me, Val Klein Hands. Pittsburgh is in the building for this one, so I was excited beyond belief. It's it's always nice to get a little bit of a taste at home. Central Flow is here. Shauna and Adam are here. Thank you both for joining me. I'm so thrilled you're here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you for having us. She's very excited to be a part of this. I know. We were having a little bit of story time before this started. I think the reason that we connected is the, the algorithm gods on Instagram sent you to me because y'all are based there. I am from there originally, and I definitely have an interest in hard rock and heavy metal music. And I was like, oh, I need to contact them immediately. And we need to be doing something. <laughs> I love <Heck> it. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Baldwin. I grew up in Baldwin, and then I graduated high school in Upper, from Upper St. Clair. Oh, and, shit. Dude, that's South Hills. Area. Right, yeah, right. yeah. Yep. So, Mainly South Hills, and then I got my broadcast degree from Point Park. I worked at CBS nice. Radio for a little bit. Like, I behind the scenes, I was with, like, KDK and Y108 and Star. Tried to do the X, tried to do, one of, you know, DVE, but it, it just it didn't work out. So I had to move and to do what I wanted to do. And I know you guys can relate to that, absolutely. But I'm tell me about what's going on at home. What's the scene going on in, in Pittsburgh? Do you, me and Adam, you want, first, like, you want to start or you? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter to me, anybody. Okay, so the scene is um, wild as ever. I wouldn't say that it's the scene that I remember from the mid 2000s, mm. but um, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot different. Um, and it's difficult being a band like Central Flow. Now I'm also in a metal band and there seems to be a nice metal niche in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, there's places for us, for us to play everywhere, but Central Flow is from the gate up against a lot of, um, a lot of stops. So first of all, we have, it's female fronted hard rock. When you think of that, maybe Paramore comes to mind. There's not much in that vein. And um and then and then we have a um we have Shauna and and she is she's black, she's indigenous and it's I guess even harder because I um and I hope I'm not talking out of turn, Shauna, but like No, no, you're fine. You're correct. Continue. It's somebody as humans we want to compare and somebody like it's easy for somebody to try and put her in a box mm. um you know but so for some for people like us we're either playing at like there's not really much in between we probably we're either playing like a, a small club or we're at Madison Square Garden, which is the point anyway, but it's there's not much of a scene surrounding what we do and and where we want to go. There's not much um, uh, uh, breeding ground for for what we're trying to do. But that's okay. We're we're, we're we both cut our teeth um, doing our own projects you know I, I did warp tour and Ozfest in the 2000s and um and i've sick of kind that. of i'd like to say that I, i've i've learned what not to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah time we're trying to do everything right but it's difficult i mean you know live music just isn't isn't um i still have a love for it and i know everybody in this room here has a love for it but i i I would say that um, a lot of people would rather uh, go to a DJ dance party. But you know what? If you come see Central Flow, it's kind of like that. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. And um, and that's what we hope to bring to the table. Yeah. And I've... I and I hope that I hope that I didn't just spend the past ten minutes like beating down the Pittsburgh scene <laughs> no but what you're what you're being honest I mean the the vibe the vibe has changed and I don't know that it's necessarily a Pittsburgh thing but I think it's a nationwide thing in that everybody wants this experience they want to watch concerts from like these fancy suites or something like that they want like dinner catered at, they want like this experience like that and I'm like 
I grew up uh, going to the bars on East Carson Street when I wanted to see somebody or like Mr. Smalls or something like that. I'm like, this is not (laughs) like, I don't really care about it being so much an experience, but I think more of the festivals and things like that are leaning that way. And I do miss that grungy atmosphere, you know, when I was going to shows that 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 was what we were seeing. That's still there. That so we've played smalls in 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 different places like that. Um, there's actually a new, um, a new place in in New Ken called Preserving Underground that is really a nice DIY place. They have a record shop and everything. It's a great place for for young people to go and see hard music. Um, but yeah, you're talking about days when there was the altar bar. There was a venue everywhere. Yeah. Right? Club right. Laga and and you know live music was the thing to do on a on a Friday or Saturday night. Um, uh, we still consume music. I think people still consume music, but you know in the in the streaming age, it's like and I'm a I'm a I'm a glutton too because you know I used to buy albums and I'd sit there and I'd be reading the lyrics and looking at the photos and making my own assumptions of these people making this music that I was listening to and it was a whole experience. And nowadays, like I have everybody's discography and all the music that was ever made at the palm of my hand. Yeah. And, and, and you can get on social media and find out all about their lives when instead of speculating about it. <laughs> and, yeah, there was there was beauty in the mystery. And um but but yeah the the, the grungy scene and everything it, it does definitely still does exist. It's um it's just different. That's all. Yeah, I, I I understand what you mean, Shauna. For your part, I mean, I think the easier access to band members and learning about them and learning their biography, I would imagine that in some way it benefits you because you get to act as representation, if not directly, for the Black and Indigenous community. Is that important to you? Yeah, that's like super important to me. Um, I did. I am thirty two. So I did also grow up in the era where I used to like be inside of like the albums and like imagining like, yeah. what the artist could be. Like one of my favorite, favorite, favorite artists is Nickelback. And I remember like imagining what they were. And now I can just two clicks away from just seeing them talk <laughs> and just interacting <laughs> with their lives as humans, which is a double-edged sword. But yeah, as a black indigenous woman, that's super um, important for me because I have had experiences where I've performed at places where black people have come up to me and have never felt like it was a safe space to uh, appreciate rock music. Um, and oh. they tell me their stories of growing up and being outcast for it. Um, so either we are we either like help to make people comfortable in the safe space to be able to appreciate and love rock music or we introduce them to a different type of rock music. I know being black in, in a black household growing up that um, rock was just considered like metal. All metal was rock. Mm-hmm. So anytime you listen to rock, it's like that screaming music, like not no. <laughs> that like you know my favorite rock growing up was like the cock rock then they go back the three doors down like uh mm-hmm. the uh, finger 11 and shit like that growing up so that's like a different type of melodic post grunge music that a lot of people weren't didn't know that there was these different pockets of rock until like kind of like we came in and a lot of people from our youth coming up i had a young um i performed at an event um by a streamer his name is berlizzi and I can't, I performed on behalf of Central Flow over in LA. And it was um, a huge event. And I had um, this these like young uh, black girls that were like in their early 20s and guys, and because it was a very nerd community, um, <laughs> anime and stuff community. And they were like, you're like my Aberdeen. And like, they were just like so, <laughs> they were so happy. And they were just like, we we need this. We And I recently went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland and I got a tiny harmonica. <laughs> So that's that. that's that. And but it was just cool. It was cool to go into a place and to see all of these black people at the start of the rock and roll and unash- unabashedly saying that we were the start of rock and roll. And I wish I would have been able to see that as a kid in like yeah. a rock and roll, like a, a hall of fame and people that look like me. I was just like, okay, Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, cool. Like, you know, 
And so I never realized that it was a possibility for me to even do the music that I loved until like way, way later in life. So, um, but yeah, so for me, it's important to um, be able to be that type of like representation for people to have two clicks away to be like, oh shit. You know, because some yeah. that is a, people find our music in a bunch of different ways, but that is a, a way for people to find our music. Oh shit! Wait, she looks like me, and I don't really listen to rock music. Let me give this a listen, and then you end up loving it because we're central flow. <laughs> Period. No, but yes. you, you speak to something that I, has always mystified me too. Just as a music nerd, I'm like, why is it that that part of the equation when it comes to rock and heavy music? And I'll say, I, I said what I said. Like I don't understand why we tend to forget the African roots that come with the music. The guitar yep. is literally an African instrument. Literally. <laughs> I, why? 100%. Like that part just seems to be, I, I don't want, I don't know that it's forgotten, but it's definitely glossed over. Yeah. It's not something that's, it, it's not something we're reminded of. It's not something that is as instant to us as putting a bowl of easy Mac in the microwave and oh, it's ready. Like, listen. Yeah, exactly it's, it's it's not there for some reason and i've always been mystified by that i don't understand why we don't go to that first and honor the fact that that's where the roots are i mean metal particularly it's blue it's a combination of blues and it's a combination of classical music where yeah, do you think the blues crazy. comes from the yes blues, exactly the exactly. blues comes nephew, from yeah a southern um, impression yeah, and my nephew, he had said something to me a couple of days ago. My nephew is like 28, which is like one of my best friends. And he was like, you know, I feel like the term black rock star is offensive because we don't say future is a black rapper, you know, because they know that we already have rock, but we call Eminem a white rapper, right? True. Because like, it's so like, they're like, it's kind of offensive. To yeah. be called a black rock star, and I didn't know that because I was wearing the title proudly, and I still do. But if rock was already ours to begin with, you know what I mean? Perry yeah, was not right. a white rock star, like you know, like so. I was it's like, like oh. it's almost attaching a label to it or something. It is like, yeah, like it's, it's, trying it's to put you in a that box. Rock wasn't black because if you assume that rap is black. You don't have to say this is a black rapper. You just say it's a rapper because you assume, yeah. you know. Yeah. So in wow, rock that music, is so like I was like, damn, that's crazy that you said that because I never considered that. That's exactly what we do, um, and what other people do to put us in a box. And it's like, no, I'm just, just a rock star. We are rock stars. We're, you know what I mean? You wouldn't yeah. call Adam a white rock star. <laughs> You know what I mean? But for some reason, and I've always wondered about the categorization and the boxes too, because it's like, why, why is it that if somebody is melanated, they're put in the R and B category, they're put in yeah. the hip hop category, and it's like, wait a second, what? That's not the case every single time. I look at Uzi and Lil Uzi Vert, and I'm like, he's yeah. in a blend of all the above. Why? What do you call him? Well, no, he gets the label of rapper, and it's like, is he or is, is he just doing his own thing? Is I've he never just heard of it? Uzi do like I never consider Uzi a rapper. Like I just was like Uzi just does his thing. It's but again, it's 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 these unspoken like racial lines that and, and racial categories that have a racial element to them where we just put them in that box. And I was like, I don't know about that one. That's a little bit sus to me. Yeah, we're breaking glass ceilings and replacing them yeah. with stairs for others to follow. That's what Central Flow do I? Why do you think that the black community is put into those boxes, the R and B or the hip hop boxes? Because it, it's it's a ooh, that's a deep conversation. Because it's safer. People like what's safe. Mm. Uh, people like what's easy, and it's easy to look at somebody and be like, I know what type of music they do. That they don't like the cognitive dissonance of. Um, me opening my mouth is sounding more like Chad Kruger than Beyonce. <laughs> they don't, you know, and, 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 and some people can get past that and some people can't. And it's just, they feel like it's like a whole project to have to take somebody that you would see and assume is a certain way and then reconstruct them when you can just let them construct themselves in front of you and just take it for what it is. Yeah. So I have no idea, but I, I love that we're moving away from that. Um, I think we are. And I appreciate that. And I feel like we are like one of the people that are like the trailblazers of, of this movement. I, I genuinely believe that shit. So like, I was just like the things that we've heard after we performed and the, the nostalgia that 
like I feel when I listen to our show, I'm like, we need this, that, and I feel like we are the people to do that. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to keep like, I know uh, some places I go in and people think I'm the help. And then mm -hmm. by the end of it, they're like, oh shit. She's part of band. <laughs> We're still doing that in 2024. Uh, -uh. Yeah. no. Even even with our music, like um, I actively do everything I can to not try so, to keep our music out of a box. But I guess as humans, it's it's easy for us to compare things, and it's we try to compartmentalize to make things make sense to us. And so, you know, because you can have this blanket term of metal, but okay, there's every type of metal. There's grindcore, there's hardcore, there's the there's right. same thing with punk, same thing with alternative. And um, because uh, um, on our first album, and, and I can't have an opinion on what others think of it, but based what I think of it is like, there's, there's, multiple genres within that and I active it's just whatever we happen to be feeling I agree. um we're very 90s influenced so obviously alternative and grunge comes to um the forefront but I really actively try for our music not to be put into a box and that also might make it hard for us to uh sell ourselves and put ourselves out there on the scene because you, we're not we're not punk we're not metal we're not we're not this or that that um people tend to take on as an identity and, right. and so it's been a difficult thing for us to even find our identity but we're just at this point um at on the uh, cusp of our second album coming out we're just unapologetically ourselves Yes. Yep. And that seems to be working for us too, which I love. I've yeah. never been able to be unapologetically myself until I joined forces with Adam in um, Central Flow. And now I feel like like the most myself I've ever been. I was in R&B before trying to do R&B, trying to do pop specifically. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like I needed to be put in a perfect box. Um, weight, like my weight was a big thing, eating disorders and shit because I'm pop. Like back then, at least you had to be really snatched, and I was never oh, really yeah. snatched. Um, Listen, we're females that grew up in the early two thousands. We know. Oh my god! So you you know, and I'm just like at, in rock. I can be a big bitch, and I can say it <laughs> in the mic and be comfortable, and then it's rock and roll, and it's badass. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, rock is so authentic. I love that. That's that's what's always attracted me to it as well, for sure. What? Tell me about the time that you first heard yourself. And I think it happened this past spring. Correct me if I'm wrong. On 105.9 The X, you hear yourself on the radio. That is a flagship station in Pittsburgh. For those who don't know, they they're legendary. Tell me about that feeling. Was that amazing? Oh my god, would, we we were on before. We're it would have been. Um, so I'm not sure which one you saw, but it would have been like the tail end of 2022, and and um, it wasn't me reacting to it. I I mean I had a reaction to it i stayed up it was we all did it was oh, awesome yeah. it was unreal <laughs> and but uh shauna tell her about i think that she's talking about when you reacted there's a you real, ran outside yeah. your car and, i and, swear uh, to god it was fucking nuts i'm in the middle of the fucking <laughs> first of all there was like two incidents of so like the first time was like way like in the beginning of the album and i was like in a planet fitness parking lot at that point, and I was like running, I was like doing laps, like, I want to fuck you right now. Okay. Then, like, months later, they play another one of our songs that, like, they never play. And that one was my favorite. Our first, mm. our, our, first one, our first time was Tonight, was, I believe, or Streetlights. Tonight or Streetlights? Streetlights street and street then Home. Streetlights. And then, so then when I heard Home, which is my favorite, like, which was like most recently, uh, I lost it. I was in, the hill district actually in my neighborhood parked in front of my house i just gotten off a long shift at a korean restaurant and um <laughs> and i just they're like yeah like stacy was it stacy on the radio she was like yeah this is sensual flow and it's just so crazy to hear like a radio voice person say your name yeah. and it's like and i'm like oh my god i want to fucking like like oh oh i can't 
remember one time I've ever had a black rock female artist on the radio. Like, and so I felt like, 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 like I was breaking records. Like we were breaking records just with everything that we're doing being so fucking cool and unique and different. And then to be played on the radio, like the alt rock radio station in Pittsburgh. Like I was just like, I'm going to tell my kids and my kids' kids when I have <laughs> eventually about this moment. Like, my furry kids are already in there just like, why is mom screaming outside <laughs> what's happening? And I'm just like, yo, I'm running down, screaming down Wally Avenue. I'm on the radio! <laughs> like, <laughs> unreal feeling, dude. And it just made me feel like we could do anything. And I mean, it's a legendary, I, for those of you who don't might be listening that don't know, like if you're not local, that is a legendary station. They are a Penguins flagship. Like they host the Penguins. Oh, yeah. So it is oh, yeah. huge. Like that's a big fucking deal to have yeah. your, oh, yeah. a, as a rock musician, as an alternative rock musician, that's a big deal to be put on there. So that's huge. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about something. I mean, you talked about this a little bit earlier, but just setting intentions because a, a quick browse of your bio that I was reading through told me that you believe in manifesting things with words. If you speak it, it will happen. If you set the intention, it will happen. Where does that belief in manifestation come from? Adam, do you want to? Yeah, so um, when it comes to like celestial stuff like that, and I, I, Shauna is far more of a believer. However, and I think it comes from um, our backgrounds of like, so me try, we've been trying to do this our whole lives. This is our passion. This is what we want to do. Like, what could, what could we be capable of if this was our career and we were supported in doing it to be able to um, do all the things that you want to do your way. And um, in trying to do the whole band and music thing, um, the early to mid 2000s up until now, um, like when I met Shauna, I was done with people. I was done with other musicians. I was just, you know, I was just going to do it myself and um, not care if anybody heard it, but it was like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then, um, and then when it all came together, I had very strict intentions and, and very defined intentions of like what this was going, how we were going to do this, because I, I, I've, I've been through it enough to know what not to do. I know how to fail at it. <laughs> and, and, um, and so it's just trying to set ourselves up to be as successful as possible and literally everything from when we got together in 2021 i believe it was 21 might have been 20 it was uh no it was it was 21 because it was after the 20 covid scare i was in dallas okay. so i was able to travel so it was after, oh, <laughs> it was after okay. that. and um we everything that i said out loud to shauna and like myself about the timeline and how this was going to go everything has come true when it when when it was supposed to and when i predicted it was going to happen beautiful and that i i think it's just believing in yourself and knowing like and it wasn't even really setting like deadlines it was it was just knowing when these things are are going to happen as long as we put one foot in front of the other and we don't quit like we cannot fail if if we don't quit we will we will succeed and every um every like new tier um somehow was 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 manifested and i think it just comes from a deep belief in yourself in each other and and what we're doing in a passion um and filled with all of the knowledge of th the experience that you're coming with to be able to make those predictions and and manifestations come to life 
Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Are we, hopefully we're manifesting another album. That's the other thing I want to ask about. What What's next? What are we looking forward to? Uh, we it's definitely have another album. Um, we do, we just, we, uh, we just finished tracking it. I'm so excited. It's Yay. been like done. fucking a year and a half, two years in the making or so. Um, and it is just like one thing that like, so I have forced my band to, um, endure my nickel back antic and um yeah i remember when i first when i first messaged adam i was like i want to be like a female nickelback he's like we're gonna be better than that so uh, yeah and so uh so chad says better is always better um which is important in a band because he would say that you can't just say i this needs to be my idea just because of your ego because it's my idea better is always better. So someone else comes up with something, you know, it's a band. It's not like a solo thing. So, um, it's, it was, um, so we had that mentality and kept growing the project. Better is always better. We worked with the equity impact center and we were able to work with Lee when I was, um, I became a part of the scale fellowship, which was incredible. And they were um, able to then help us tremendously with the financial part of this project and also the strategic part of it. People, a lot of people don't realize how important it is as a music artist to be very business savvy, especially in today's world. So understanding like, you know, how the release works, how the um, like industry works in general, how your contracts are gonna work and operations agreements and all that type of shit has, I feel like helped us um, tremendously move ahead a lot further because we're like in the know on like the music and the artist side. Gotcha. And um, so, yeah, we're finally done. And we got like singles coming out here shortly, like around the Halloween spooky time. I am a spooky bitch. Like, Me too. Yes. Uh, my whole, like my cover is a spooky forever. <laughs> like you want to talk about manifestation. What? I got like my one altar here, one altar here. Like I. <laughs> when you are blessed with that typical Pittsburgh Italian American dark hair and pale skin. Oh and my like, god! And you're and you're like Lydia Dietz fucking reincarnated. It just it just yes. It's it getting woke woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that part. So, like, yeah, like, and I'm also really excited about that because I, one thing that I feel like I'm forced to learn in this lifetime, me personally, is patience and the virtue of patience. I hate it. I have a Aries moon. I don't, oh. I'm not, I'm a Gemini sun, Aries moon, Gemini rising, Gemini Mercury, Gemini Venus. I don't want to fucking wait. My Mars is an Aries. What is wait? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, huh? Like, and so I, meeting Adam, who is a Virgo, right? So like Beyonce. He keeps you grounded. Michael Jackson, yes, are Virgos. And then you got the Prince and the Paul McCartney is Gemini. Mm. You feel me? And like, like, so I'm like all in the air, but he's like, it's okay. We're going to get to where we're going to get to. Let's keep moving forward. I'm like, no, I hate everything. I want to move to Korea. No, I'm giving up. <laughs> And he's like, Shauna, you're just going to be depressed in Korea. So why don't we figure this out here? Okay. And then we get to Korea happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, so um, it's, it's amazing to have that energy because I feel like that's led to a lot of our success too, is I'm up here and all types of like in the sky about all these like crazy ideas and Adam has them too, but then he has the like the patience and the know-how and he's just a very grounded individual who is just like everything's gonna be okay even like the shit it's like that meme of like everything being on fire behind you and the little oh, girl the, yeah the dog one and it's like he's yeah, like everything I, it, 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 this is fine this is fine, this is fine. Um, <laughs> so and that's so like helpful and i'm really excited about our second album i think the first single is coming out in october we have like a we had a schedule somewhere in the, in the motherfucking one of them organizational apps okay. and shit. I can't think off the top of my head, Adam. You know that shit, goddamn Virgo. Yeah, and coming back. I mean, it's amazing that uh, that it works because uh, patience is the big one for both of us. Because uh, on a lot of fronts, we butt heads, but it just comes down. We both want the same things. Yep. And and and. That's why we're able to, in, in my opinion, attack it today in our maturity. If we'd have met in the mid 2000s or something, that would, nah. would probably be <laughs> okay. actively trying to 
ruin each other's careers. I yes. don't know. I don't know. Yes. No, but, I um, totally agree. Or, or we wouldn't that. even mix, but <laughs> so yeah. And and what you said about like that's a another big difference about today is like um so sensual central flow has grown beyond just ourselves and like for us as artists and musicians the easiest thing is the music the music's the yeah. easiest thing getting together and playing it's the easiest thing but now you're expected to be a manager a booking agent a social media expert a yeah, financial totally. expert yes you have to be all the things and for anybody to take a chance on you you've got to look like a good investment to them so you very right. much are having to run yourself like a business and um yeah I, I i didn't i and let's be honest i that's like the last thing that people of our caliber want to care about at all yeah. you know it's the <laughs> things that you don't want to do but on it is those i mean it, it the music is the alpha and the omega but is it is those things in in that type of mind that it will set you apart because we're just one of a million trying to do the same thing. And um, yes, the album is done. And yes, we will start dropping some singles um, this fall. Okay. And uh, I, it's it, the first album came together. It was very organic and it happened quick. And it was oh, recorded in like a week. It was, it was in and out and it was awesome. And it shows uh, what I can say about this one is it shows and and I'm rambling, but we ended up at the end of 2022. Like I, it was coming back to better is always better. I was like take taking an inventory of where we were and how far we had gone. And this comes back to the manifestation and the predictions. And I was like, this yeah. ain't cutting it. Mm -hmm. Stopped everything because Shauna and I write the song, um, and then we've always had a band surrounding us. Mm -hmm. But at the end of 2022, I was just like, we've taken this as far as we can take this in Pittsburgh as a local act. And, interesting, you know, our, our, our hometown isn't necessarily our target audience, like the world is. Yeah. And so we need to take a different look at this. And we chose to just trudge forward ourselves on this second album and with the help of some other amazing people and this album really shows maturity and i think that if you were to listen to anything from the first album and then listen to something from this album you would immediately be like wow this is massive progression and a okay. big push forward and and i i believe in the songs and in the production that will show itself yeah and everybody's so cool everybody's yeah. so cool now like they like our band members like we have garrett who was a drummer insane cool ass libra okay we got troy the bassist leo have you ever seen a lead bassist well you're gonna see one in central flow okay <laughs> he is out front showmanship yeah. you know we don't see the bassist leo. that leo Yes, we, we have an entirely different like, live band. Zach yeah. is our second guitarist. He is a Capricorn. So, like, you know, we got, listen, we got, the, we got the Avengers here. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. We the have Avengers. A whole team of people now. Yes, it is. It 100%. Because when we started the album, it was like, I had this vision and I was like, you know, how can you expect others to take like what you, if you have this vision for something, like even you, Val, whatever it is in your life, and and I guess this is still revolving around manifestation, but if you have this vision and like you see it clearly to completion, like how can you expect somebody else to have the belief in it? Nobody's gonna take better care of that vision than you. Yeah. And And so Sean and I pushed forward and did this whole album ourselves all the instruments everything me and her and then we assembled the avengers mm -hmm. the avengers and, of the zodiac uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, 
yes. and it has it has it has um it is it has it has worked and 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 it is working and I'm excited to um take the show on the road and 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 <laughs> chills chills I was literally show people I'm excited to get on the road with these people Ooh, and y'all are connected um, y'all are in sync <laughs> yeah we are and and um. Yeah, I, I we could we could. I I'm also one to uh, stop myself and say you know just just wait until until the same. I, I it'll speak for itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I real quick. I know you asked about the album, but I did do a tarot spread that I did take a picture of way way back in the inception. Oh, so fun. Love that it just said that we were going to basically it said that just we were going to be spearheading something great collectively it was like a collective thing and like it was just like there's just going to be a whole bunch of people who are like helping to get you to the level that you need to get to on this collective like creative project and that was like before we even recorded our first album that was just like a little something i just wanted to chat with my grandfather who was a musician and i took a picture and sent it to them was like holy shit, guys and like now look what it's like become and so yeah I, I i firmly believe in that i'm like this is our purpose and um as long as you're walking your purpose and keep moving forward i don't know what fucked up everyone else's path but we're going just fine i just <laughs> we're doing what we need to do and it's working out great so i don't know I, I yeah. hope I'm on the list of people that's helping. So we should... some fucking Lulu, or we wouldn't have fucking did this. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. I you're not cool shit. Like up. your vibe was cool. Like I checked out the show and the nuts, and I was like, "This, yes, this is a good look for like <laughs> both of us." And I need to chat with you like again in the future. Like, yeah, yes, you're always very welcome to. We have no, we have so much in common. I knew that, and then I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely relate to. I mean, it's sad. Like I relate to leaving our hometown to do something bigger, to do something outside of it. I I know it's not an easy thing to do because there's At so all. much nostalgia there. There's emotional connection there. I've done it. It sucks, but it's so worth it. And I wish you well on that because I think you're yeah. all going to be better off for it. Really. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Val. I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, Val. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs>